Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Compass Girls Facebook Live. Uh, I'm Rachel Ferrucci, and you have Zippy Sandler. Make that's me. Sure, yeah, that's her. <laughs> um, we have matching shirts on today. OBF now. She has better boobs. I do have good boobs. I never did before, though. <laughs> I like <laughs> um, so we are the compass girls make sure you follow us um, on Twitter at the compass girls Instagram and you're here on our Facebook page we would love if you could help us out and give a share um, so we have something really fun planned tonight because we had so much engagement and we want to give back so Zippy yep. has a giveaway. How about two giveaways? Okay. Yes. We'll give one one each to two people. Let's because we're it. gonna be talking about skincare for winter, and you can't forget your lips when you're dealing with your skin. And I've got some of these fun, fresh lip treatments. Um, they actually have zodiac signs on them, but they're they're both the same. So why don't we give one of each of these away tonight? That sounds awesome. I love doing we'll giveaways. Talk about them a little later. Love Maybe. it, love it. Um, so we have so much to talk about today. Um, so we actually have so much to talk about that we need to cut our travel piece. Um, and split it up. So we're going to be talking about the Outer Banks today. And um, we're also talking about how to combat that dry winter itch, which totally drives you crazy. It sucks. You get the ashy skin and um, being itchy is not fun. So um, plus, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to take care of your skin just for a second in Florida in winter, because we have to make sure that we're taking care of our skin too. Uh, yeah, definitely. Because your body is, your skin and your body is used to the warmer temperature. So this is yeah. good for you. Um, somebody was saying how cold it was in Orlando. They had a coat on. I was like, oh my God, how I would love 50 degrees. But I get it because you get- 50, it was in the 30s at night. Oh. <laughs> well, it's like one here, so I would take 30 at this point, but I get it. It's it's still cold for you. Um, yeah. yeah, so what are you drinking, Zay? You got something? Oh, yeah, I do. I have, tonight I'm drinking 14 hands hot to trot. Oh, my God, it's, I love it's, that. It's, it's a blend. I The thing I like about it is it's a very drinkable wine. I and love it. And you be very jealous, but I've got my Coravin which maintains the cork. I love this thing. So if I decide I don't want to drink it for another six months, it'll stay fresh. Oh my God. I want that. I need. So, so and this is a, um, a Washington wine. It is from the Columbia river basin and I just love it. And if you don't know what 14 hands means, it's the measurement of a point. <laughs> That's how you measure a horse in hands. And that's the wine is hot to wines. Hmm? That's one of my favorite wines. And is it? The one that I have tonight, I actually have two bottles and I have a Chardonnay and a Pinot Noir. Okay, so you're the French girl. I am not. So yeah, she's already laughing for the way I said Pinot Noir. Okay, whatever. So now I'm really gonna botch this right. French name. So the wine that I have is George. De Boof. <laughs> okay. You could you didn't have to go that far. <laughs> yeah. Am George I close? Boeuf. You're very close. Okay. I'll give you that. Okay. We'll give you French lessons. Yeah, Zippy does yeah. all the French talking and French kissing, <laughs> and I do all the Italian stuff. <laughs> so my hands are going and her lips are going. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sorry. Um but anyway, so they had sent me this wine um, a while ago. And, right. you know, I always have people over a lot. And we just open up bottles of wine. So the bottle of wine were opened and drank. 
or drunk before I got to take a picture or anything. So a couple days later, I went to go do some posts and there's no more wine. I'm like, oh my God, it was that good. We drank it and we're like, ah, forget oh about my it. God. So I actually had to go get more of it. And funny story, this happened one other time with the wine that I loved and it was 14 hands hot to trot. Swear really? to God. It's, it's, it's you have great. Great. The thing about it is it's an inexpensive wine. It's just such a drinkable, delicious. Yep. Yeah, this is real. This is yummy. It's uh, so look at this, though. This is kind of cool. It comes with a seed, uh, a packet of wildflower seeds. Oh, that's so cool. What, what oh, they're doing, that. they're working um, with a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping people protect yeah. pollinators. So it's called the Pollinator Partnership, and you get a packet of wild flower seeds, and each bottle has um, flowers on it. Whoops. Very so nice. This one is, um, I, I don't know that flower offhand. Let me look really quick. It's called the, I'm going to mess this up, Yellow Gentian. I'm pretty sure it's Gentian because it's. T-I-A-N, yeah. which is Armenian, and I know Armenian. And then yeah. the Pinot, whoops, has red poppies. I'm sorry. I'm oh, what a pretty label. Isn't it pretty? Yeah. So, um, yeah, so the bottles go for about $11.99 each. Um, they're really good. And um, uh, I just... I just wanted to tell you. So with the wildflower seed packet, um, so they're actually helping and, and growing. You, you know, we had a problem with bees, with honeybees. So Where? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. everywhere. Yeah. I thought you meant in your house. <laughs> but, you know. So, yeah. So I, I think that it's a good cause. It's a good wine. Like, who doesn't love wine? I don't like bees, but I do love honeybees because they, you know, pollinate our food so we need the honeybees mm -hmm. yes so um so that's that uh so let's get into this so, can i just say one thing about your wine i just yeah. want to say one thing about the wine Go ahead. so you did a decent job with with the name of the wine um it's pinot noir <laughs> so noir noir <laughs> noir, noir. noir. Okay. And you say, but it's Pinot Noir, and Georges de Boeuf is very famous for their uh, Beaujolais Nouveau. And the Beaujolais Nouveau comes out only once a year. It comes out the third Thursday of November every year, and that's it. It comes out limited, and that's it. So that's a very nice standard um, a vineyard that it comes from. It's, it's one of the old guard French vineyards. So it's, they make a very nice wine, so enjoy. Cheers. Wow, that's yeah. interesting. Um, can we get back about the giveaway really quick? Because we oh, want yeah. to tell everyone, um, you're giving it away with um engagement. So if yeah. you engage with us, if you ask us a question, if you make a comment, we're we're gonna try to get to everything. Um, now. Oh, hi, Kathy. I have, I, have, I have this thing that won't go away on the screen, so you're going to have to look at the comments. <laughs> yes, I, I could I could see the, the comments, but for okay, any engagement, you. if you share it, if you share our video, if you go and like us on Twitter or on Instagram. And that's um, all at, at The Compass Girls. That's right. We're, we're at The Compass Girls. So really quick, Kathy, who just joined us, I got to tell you, she's like my um, workout mom because oh. um, when I'm like, uh, I don't want to go, she really pushes me. And today when I showed up, and I have to say I'm patting myself a, a little bit because it hurts, but um, this is my third week. And my arm was bothering me from my golfer's elbow. And Kathy showed up tonight with a, a thing to put on my arm so oh. I could work out. And my arm didn't hurt at all. What a sweetheart. Yes, she is a sweetheart. So I just wanted to tell you that because it's important. 
She's my yeah. workout mom. You're my social media mom. <laughs> I got lots of moms. Have so many moms. I and then know. you know what I mean. You got a real mom. <laughs> I know. I do. Um, all right. So let's get into the skincare because there's so much information that I want to tell you. So why is skin so dry in the winter? Most people don't know this, but the cold air sucks all the moisture out. So th that's why you notice in the winter, like your hair kind of gets staticky, electricity, yeah. you're given shots and all that. So um, it, it literally dries, um, dries up the ear and um, it calls, causes dryness for our skin and everything else. And plus we're, we're losing moisture from our skin because the ear is dry. So, you know, our skin, our, our skin, our, uh, moisture in our skin is evaporating. So that's actually the cause of it. Um, in the summer, you know, you, you're all, you're more sweaty, humid. So it's, it's not as dry in the summer. If anything, it gets dry when you're out in the sun and things like that. But okay. that's a whole nother story. Gotcha. So um, your face, hands, feet, body, all different skins. You don't want to use the same products on them. Um, your face is, uh, you know, products should be gentle. Uh, your feet, you know, you could scrub the hell out of those babies. Um, and your hands. <laughs> every time you wash your hands, you should moisturize every single time. Because otherwise you wind up with, you know, dishpan hands where like literally your skin gets so, so dry. So you want to use the proper product for the proper body part. Um, so let's talk quickly about moisturizers. I'm not going to get into specific products. I know you have a couple products you're going to share with us. I do. But um, your facial moisturizers, there's water-based and oil-based. This is all opinion, and it always depends on your skin type. But I will tell you, I think that water-based, you get more benefits from them because a water-based moisturizer um, penetrates and it actually locks in the, the moisture in your skin, an oil base kind of makes a layer. So if you have problem skin, it could cause clogged pores or breakouts. But sometimes you're, you, you need it. You need an oil base. Um, but I'm more prone to recommend um a water based and Interesting. Uh, the uh the other thing is a water base softens the skin it usually has emollients and humectants in it which soften the skin and um and actually it traps the moisture in the skin a lot of times it also has vitamin e um which vitamin e helps the skin retain um, it's moisture and then vitamin C actually improves the skin. So hmm. those are some things you want to look for. So when you're using your moisturizers, look at the ingredients so you know what's best for you. If you're trying something new, I don't care what it is, anti-aging serum, moisturizer, whatever it is, only try one new product at a time, just like when you had a baby and you had to give them its first vegetables. You introduce one at a time for two weeks, see how you react to it, okay? So I know, you know, sometimes we get a whole bunch of products and we're like, oh, I'm trying this, I'm trying this. You get an issue and you're like, well, what's it from? Well, you don't know because, you know, you have so much, um, so many different products. So there is a product on the market right now. Um, it's from Dr. Barbara Strom. And it's customized and made with Ooh. your blood. Ew. So <laughs> Wait a minute. Do you, what, 
Like yeah, so they take she draws your blood and she takes what whatever process she has of I don't know what she takes out of it and puts it into this moisturizer and it's fourteen hundred dollars. Holy cow. Wait, it's supposed to be a miracle cream. Now yeah, I have not dollars. So Haley Baldwin uses it and um, Dr. Barbara Strum is actually Cher's best friend. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Candy. So um, I would love to try it. I would totally give blood to try it. You wouldn't? Um, probably not for $1,400. For $1,400, I could get Botox and Juvederm and probably Kybella take care of this <laughs> <laughs> i don't know <laughs> if it's this miracle uh, maybe cream, just botox and juvederm <laughs> <laughs> i might pay it if it's a real miracle cream and i yeah, hope he isn't watching because he's like oh hell no <laughs> <laughs> your husband is watching and i'm sure he's saying oh hell no <laughs> But I mean, well, what are you saying, New Harley? If you yeah, do it exactly. So you know, you hear like, oh, you know, what do you want my blood or whatever the saying is. You know, I suck with with the sayings, but um, yeah, they actually take your blood for that. Yeah. Um, no. So now for the tips, because okay. So I love, I love that. I want to try this. I keep thinking like bloody cream <laughs> yeah. i want is it red no do we know what it looks like it's white oh, like, take out the platelets palettes platelets platelets oh okay yeah she has oh, stem cell, cell cream <laughs> is that what it is is it like a stem cell cream they didn't you know what i researched it and i can't remember everything because i was so okay. blown away <laughs> with they dried well, yeah. blood and you put it here two weeks later <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um okay so let's get back to our tips because these are important so the first thing is hot showers you're freezing it's cold you get in the shower hot showers no mm -mm. don't do it hot showers you are just sucking all that moisture right out of your skin don't do it i know you're cold you know what do like when the kids were little turn up the heat in your house make it warm then go take a shower i don't know what to tell you but hot showers are not good for you and i love hot showers like mm -hmm. i i could go in a pot of boiling water like that's, mm -hmm. that's how hot i like it um so the hot shower the hot water pulls the moisture out of your skin so warm water is good and then it'll help with keeping your your skin moisturized um ah. yes and the other thing too is help moisturize the ear you can use a humidifier um i always used to put a pot of water in the kids rooms in my room just a little pot or even a glass of water just something that's going to evaporate into the ear to to get some moisture in the ear that helps um humidifiers are great um and i don't then, have to worry about that down here yep when you're i know when you're in the shower right so you know how I, last week i talked about you know i had my towel and all that i'm going to show you again when you get out of the shower <laughs> you have your towel <laughs> when you put it on don't do this just go like this really quick look is that not what okay. So I'm going to talk about skin brushing because that would do just the opposite. When you take yeah, a soft skin brushing isn't every time you get out of the shower. No, and actually you do it before you shower to loosen the dead skin right. and to and to push the blood. You always brush up to push the blood towards your heart. Right. I, I, will, I don't do it all the time, but occasionally I do brush. But I'm like, why would I pat myself if I just brushed myself? But easy because you don't want um, 
you know, you don't want to damage your skin too. You, you right. want it. Uh, oh, no, use a soft brush when you, you know, use a wire brush. <laughs> Ouch. Um, yeah. So you want to, the, the cat's cleaning himself. <laughs> And then you need to close the door. The floor is closed. The other thing you want to do is, um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, when you get out of the shower and yeah. you're, you're padding so you're not completely dry, that's when you want to put your moisturizer on. Just let your skin be a little damp, including your face. You want it to be a little bit damp because it's going to help, again, lock in the moisture. Okay. We talked about um, heat. Can, can I say what I do? Yeah. I okay. So one of the products I like, and I don't have it with me because I ran out, is a in-the-shower body oil. So I know that my skin is, is wet when I moisturize my body skin. Body oils in the shower are really good. Yeah, I use the Neutrogena yeah. with the olive oil, but Jergens makes a nice one that's uh, more like a cream or a lotion, and yep. you can actually put it on right in the shower, so you know your pores are open, you know that you've got the wetness to your skin. Yeah, and um, uh, body scrubs in the shower that are made with oil, and uh, why you got that look on your face? I'm going to show my favorite body scrub. Cool. <laughs> I'll wait till you're done talking about it. And while you're doing it, I'll be going on. Ah, <laughs> I love that that's your favorite. It is. Um, yeah. So like a product like Touch, it's made with organic oils and sugar. And it exfoliates the skin gently. Look at, see, we're redoing touch. We, we're doing new packaging, Zippy and I. So we will be doing a relaunch. Uh, and people. This is, this is a self promo. Yeah. People keep asking me. I can't tell you how many people have asked me in the last month. My girlfriend, Eileen, like makes a comment every time she talks to me, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could get a scrub. Ba, 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 ba. But. Yes, we're we're looking at the spring for a new launch, a relaunch. Okay. Really now. Um, so body scrubs are really good, but uh, again, you want to check the ingredients because um, you want to make sure that the oils are organic. A jojoba oil, grapeseed oil is good for you. Coconut oil, Vicky, you asked for coconut oil. Yes, coconut oil is good for your skin. Um, now I gotta compare. Oh. <laughs> We're like we get so off topic so quick. <laughs> so touch sugar, jojoba oil, is that how you say it? Sweet yep. almond oil, grapeseed oil, essential oils, carrier oils, fragrance, and coloring. No fragrance that anymore. And no coloring. I'm sorry. No fragrance. Essential oils is the fragrance and no color. Right. Okay, so that's all that's in that. This book is wow. what is in this scrub. Holy mackerel. Ours is organic. You could eat it. I don't suggest you eat it. Yeah. Eat it. yeah. I, unless, unless I was like, never mind. Well, if you were very good oils and sugar, so we don't put color in it anymore. Well, essential oil, you don't want to. I shouldn't show the brand of this one. Michelle, you would love it. I, I, I'm serious, like it's. So I want to show you what the difference is though, that in a, in a good, in a really good product, the oil actually separates from the scrub and you have to mix yep. it together. You know that it's good for you. This one, which I use, and, and this is, it's a, it's Dove, it's a, um, you can pick it up at CVS or Walmart or Target or whatever, is more of a cream base. It doesn't do the same thing. It does exfoliate, but when I use this, yeah, I it does exfoliate, exfoliates well. It doesn't leave my skin feeling like silky. That makes me feel oh. so good. So Touched is mine and Zippy's product, but, um, it's, it's Rachel's was, product. It was my baby. I created it. So that yep. makes me so happy. Um, 
So the other thing with, with your face really quick, I want to show you this product that I got. It's Michael Todd. It's, it is a vibrator, but it's not that kind of vibrator. It's a vibrator to put on your creams and stuff. So you're not oh. using your hands. It's more gentle. Now, I'm going to come a little closer, so don't think I'm crazy, because it's you. It's not on. There's not an on-off button. So you put your, your cream on, and you go. Can you hear it? No. Where's my speaker? I have I no clue. My speaker. Okay. Trust me. Screen, so, yeah. Trust You're me. Going, hmm. So, anyway. I believe you. I believe yeah. you. Um, but it is oh, it, in the cream on. Yes, so you, put, you put all your facial products on with this. So it's it's really cool. You're not using your hands for your mm -hmm. face. Um, that's what that is for. Um, the other thing I know last week I told you how much I love the simple wipes to take your makeup off. Yep. But in the winter, if your face is dry. A lot of those wipes do have alcohol in them. So you want to check that. And if your face is dry, guess what? Go old school and use cold cream. Really? Yeah, because cold cream. Cold body pores? Well, no, not if you take it off right and if you wash your face correctly and things like that. Like if you think, no, I, I, I use old school Pond's cold cream. Wow, that's cheap too. In the winter, I my mother used it. My grandmother used it. Both of them always had beautiful skin, and um, you know they washed their face proper and and used moisturizer. So no, it didn't do anything. I especially use it to take my eye makeup off. Maybe not so much here. I'll still use the wipe, or I'll wash my face. I wash. You know, wash. I, I, I use a soy cleanser. I use the fresh soy cleanser. Yeah. The, the soy leaves my my skin a little brighter. And that's the other thing too is your cleanser. So don't use a harsh soap. And and we talked about this too last or last week or the week before that. You know, use a gentle, mild uh, soap for your body. Maybe uh, there's the. Um, Oh my gosh, the Olay uh, cream that you put on a loofah and, um, you know, that soaps up. You could use that. The other big thing is if you're um, a shaver, if you don't wax and you shave, don't use soap. Use conditioner. Mm -hmm. oh, and you can buy cheap suave, 98 cents, whatever, whenever it's really cheap. I used to keep the big bottles of the cheap conditioner in the shower. Yeah, I used to buy ninety. I don't know how much it is now, but it's um, like ninety. The other <laughs> thing is products with aloe in them. So there's Triderma. Um, it's a line of um, botanical based, cruelty free products. So oh, nice. um, I'll put the link in, but um, that's something to try. And also, um, Freedom Naturals is also a, a good product. Um, and what what else do you got? You have a product there. So I, I, okay, so I have, I, I'm drawn by scent. I know a lot of people like unscented things, but, and right now I'm using um, a pomegranate scented Neutrogena rain bath. Mm -hmm. I'm a rain bath girl. I've always used rain bath. I like the original scent. It just it has a memory sent to me you know how things have a memory scent that when you smell them you have all these i have memories of high school when i when i smell it and the same with the with the almond oil the uh, oil that i use afterwards um i also during the day so down here uh we have to deal with sun year round so the number one the is to make sure that you are wearing sunscreen. And I know you have it on your list, and you have the one that I actually use. I don't have it right here. You have the uh, La Roche-Posay, right? Yes, yes. Um, I, huh? That's for, um, yes, I do have that. That's one of the ones I use. Yeah, and I, I love that as well. But, um, and then just during the day, I just throw on, you know, when I'm sitting, 
because my my legs get ashy and dry just because I wear shorts all the time and and I'm in the sun and you know I get sunspots. You you can see because I didn't take care of my skin when I was young. I have terrible. I don't know if you can see terrible sunspots. My face. You can see over here. That's all sun damage. Um, so you know a little late to the party. But I do like the um, as I aged as I age. Um, I, I do like the anti-aging skin creams. I think they make a big difference. They're a little bit heavier. Um, this one happens to be made of flower extracts and mango seed butter and all good things. Um, I love fresh products. And you know what we didn't talk about? One a quick thing, because I know we have to get onto the outer bags. What? Um, masks. And masks aren't just for your face. Oh, right. And... So let me bring up now feet. Oh, <laughs> this is when I tell you it's my favorite product. I will tell you every single one of my friends use this. And I even made my husband use it. Use I it. made my husband use it because he has disgusting. <laughs> well, guys' feet are just dry and they don't go for pedicures and all that. So my husband is is a spa snob now you would never know it looking at him and i had to pull teeth and nails to get him to the spa and once he got there he was like holy crap like yeah i want her to rub my ass you know he was like <laughs> all into it oh my god i just dropped everything i had <laughs> he does he's like I'm going down <laughs> he loves it and, and good for him because that benefits me because then he has, you know, softer skin. But anyway, with the baby foot, that's this. Okay. This is not sponsored or anything like that. I buy these with my own money. They're $25. Um, they are? $25. Uh, you put these booties on your feet for an hour. And it's got all the gel stuff in it. You take it off and then you wait. Uh, hi, EJ. You wait for um, an hour. Wait, I already said that. So you wait the hour, you rinse it off. And then over the next week, all of a sudden, the skin literally just falls off. You know, like if you get a bad sunburn and, and it, it, you could like feel it off but you can't peel it they tell you don't peel it off so here's yeah. the thing right no but the, if you're walking barefoot it's oh don't really, you leave trails of it yeah don't I, I i personally have never used it i made i mean i made i'm going to give his name i made mr s use it and i did it on his feet and i was like <laughs> But it worked. His feet were never softer. It does work. You would like, I can't believe how much comes off my feet. And you're just like, like, don't use it if you gotta go somewhere in the next week or two because it's you gross. Could be wearing like boots. Like you yeah, can't no no flip-flops with this. No. It is amazing. The only thing I'll say, so uh, you know, Rich says to me. After we used it, he was like, oh, wow. He goes, yeah, the next week, he goes, oh, we should do baby foot again. And I'm like, dude, I don't even know if this shit is FDA approved. It's from Asia. You're I don't even know it's banned from Facebook. Oh, I'm Facebook. sorry. <laughs> I, I'm and sorry. normally, that's what we do. We throw the F-bomb and that. But <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. I, I got a bad habit with the S-H word. I'll be careful. Sugar, yeah, yeah, yeah. sugar, sugar, sugar. So yeah, yeah. Um, I'm saying it too. you yell at me when I say it because I do the same thing. I know, I know. But I, crap. it's it's crap. I'm not gonna tell you it's safe or anything else, but I don't care. I love it. I love it, and I try to use it at least once a month. And I tell everybody, and I will shout it from a rooftop. I should be an affiliate. Um, yeah, EJ loves it too. It is a really gross process, but important. It's a gross. Thank you, EJ. It is a gross process. <laughs> and also, um, EJ wants to know that the sunscreen, it's, it's, um, look, it's another, Roche -Posay. um, do you, I have some, but it's outside by the pool. So, All right, so we'll get the link. Photo on it and throw it up. Yeah, we will get you the link for that. 
The other thing I want to say, uh, somebody I saw said that they use um, uh, something with baking soda to take off, honey and baking soda to take off eye, eye um, makeup. Um, don't use baking soda. Baking soda, is it strips. So my clients, because you get hair um, buildup with shampoo and gels and mousses and blah, blah, blah. I have them use a baking soda mixture to strip all that out of their hair. So do something else. Don't do baking soda. I mean, baking soda we use to clean out our, our drain. So it's it's pulling the moisture out. No baking soda. Yeah, you have um, to brush your teeth. <laughs> you to brush your teeth. That's good. Pots and pans, it works. Um, Courtney came on and said uh, the oh. micellar, bleh, the micellar water she uses to take off her makeup all day. See, I, I break have, out from it. I ha oh, do you? Did you ever try the miracle water from it? No, I used the Garnier. And I broke out, so oh. I'm done. But I'm at done. least you tried it. You know it's not another product you tried. No, I used that was the, I was testing it. Okay. Thank you. I've been drinking wine the whole time. I'm like, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be blitzed, and you're gonna be. Oh, I've got it together. <laughs> All right. So let's. We're so behind. We may go behind. Over, over, but. If we go over, who cares? Um, yeah, we'll be talking to ourselves. <laughs> yeah, so it's me. Star travel, you go. So, no, girl. One of my favorite, one of my very favorite places to go, actually, and I've I've only been twice, and I would go every single year if I could. And I keep trying to tell, talk Mr. S into renting a house on the beach. Is the Outer Banks. Um, I love it for its number one for its location because it's um, it's great if you live up in New England or you live in Florida. It's like a half almost a halfway spot, so we can get the whole family together. So it's very easily accessible on the East Coast from as far north as Maine and as far south as as uh, down here. It's a, and um, you know they did have a little issue this year with hurricanes, and because it is uh, on the, it's between the ocean and the sound. Uh, the islands are always changing, and you know, I mean, wind, water, storms, it, it does all that. Um, but one of the things I love when you first drive in are all those gorgeous houses that are up on stilts on the beach. To me, there's something really romantic about that. Real, that to me is a real vacation. You know, to, to have a house on the beach, on the stilts with the dog running underneath and you just run into the ocean. And it's just, it's amazing. And there are just so many options. I mean, that you can stay there. It's, there, it's easy. You can go, actually, I believe you can go on the, um, visit the Outer Bank site and they even list rentals. They love, they, they don't just push their hotels and resorts. They're all about the house rentals because it's such a big business for them. And entire families and extended families go there. When you and I were there, when I, we stayed at Shutters um, on the banks, but there was another group there and they had, what, a 17 room house? Was it 17? Do you remember? Yeah, it was something like that. 16 or 17 room That's house. That's crazy. It's incredible. I think we all the friends have to do that one year. Just go there and and rent the house and just hang out because there's just so much to do. Um, we stayed at a cute little hotel called Shutters on the Beach, on the banks rather, and it's in Kill Devil Hills. And, um, and if that's kind of a central location, that was it. That was the location that made it easy for us to get to Duck, to go to the other way, to go down to um, a Where's Karoo Village down the opposite way. Um, you and your, I must say, you knew your way around really yeah, well. It was, it was just, it's, you know, you go one direction or the other. I mean, it's it's like two blocks from the sound. You know, it's just a matter of a few blocks from the sound to the ocean. So really, you're just going up and down the drive. So that's really it. But there is a gorgeous resort there, and um, I've been twice. Uh, I would love to stay there. It's called the Sanderling, 
It is in Duck. And uh, the general manager, Dick, is a sweetheart. He actually lives off season. He lives near me in the same. I live in Fort Pierce. He lives in Fort Pierce. So we live in the same town. Only He's over on the island. I'm, I'm on the um, mainland side, and he's on the island side. And he's such a sweetheart. But it's just, it, it's gorgeous. And they have the most amazing spa, don't they? Uh, yeah, it was... <laughs> It was it's, really it's absolutely beautiful. You just you know, you just you gotta love it. So anyway, uh, I have been once before. Uh, the time I went before, I stayed at a different location. It was actually a condo that's owned by uh, Kitty Hawk Kites called Waves Village. So if you have a pet, there are so many pet friendly uh, options to stay. Uh, that's one of them. It is a condo. I we had a three bedroom condo with a balcony that looked off on the sound, and the kite surfers went right by our balcony. It was actually a um, a hot tub, so you could sit in the hot tub, watch the drink some wine, watch the kite surfers. It was just absolutely gorgeous, and it's not expensive. I had looked into it, uh, so that that's another one of my favorite places to stay. But uh, so right, just. I, I just want to sh show a, a funny picture. This is from when we stayed, <laughs> when we were in our hotel room. <laughs> so was that, an, I was looking for your earring shot. Yeah. 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 You were so mean. Wait, you take I, I'm going to do a good one of me too, because you okay. were, you Rachel thought, dropped an earring. I go to the floor to look for it. And what does she do? She takes a photo of me. She uh she thought that me with the braids was, was the funniest thing. She kept calling me Pippi. So Rachel sleeps. Oh, so we're giving out all of our hints, all of our, all of our secrets. Rachel sleeps in braids so that her hair looks nice in the morning. Is that why you do it? I don't why know. Just Sometimes I just if I don't want to do my hair in the morning, I'll do the braids and then I just it's I just you know finger it and then I don't Excuse have to me? worry about it. <laughs> what? Yes, yeah. You said it again? Uh, yes, that's what I do. <laughs> but you do uh, the only thing the if actually you know you should rent a car. It's it's a long drive from the airport because you've got to fly. In. Do you remember how long it took us from the airport to get there? I don't. Quite remember. a few hours. It was a few hours. So you want to rent a car at the airport so you have a car there because it isn't. Um, you want to see all of the banks. You don't want to just be in that little area that, that you stay, unless you're just planning on staying on the beach all day. Yeah. But we'll learn later about all of the adventurous things that we've done. And I'm sure so you've seen tell, them before. Why don't you tell about um, our our sailing? Because you were, we both uh, sailed. My father-in-law had a boat, so we used to sail. But Zippy sailed her whole life. Yeah, only because I had to, not because I loved it. Uh, we loved it. Um, I, yeah, I love cleaning up after. <laughs> but we didn't have. I had a. I we had a twenty-five foot O'Day. That was like with a with a you know a little head in it, and it slept cuddy cabin sleeper, and you know the galley was about that big. This was a forty-one foot Gulf Star. It was gorgeous. So Rachel and I. Was that the first day we were there? We yeah. went off to, we took off to Mantio, which is an adorable little town. It's so cute. It's so quaint. And we met this lovely couple, Dan and Catherine. And they are co-captains. They're husband and wife. And they're co-captains of, oh, you have all the photos. Look at you. I'm putting them up while you're talking. Oh, my gosh. So they're co-captains of this gorgeous uh, sailboat. It's right. It's it was really easy to find. You just go straight to the the waterfront in Mantio, which is on Roanoke Island. The boat holds, I think she said, uh, six guests, and they have done weddings on board. Um, it was we did a a sunset. It was, yeah, it was beautiful. So, I mean, it's just, it's absolutely magical. The sun setting on the banks 
uh, is gorgeous anyway. But to see it from the water and to and to see the Outer Banks from the water is just something that's incredibly special. The only thing is, our the hot tip is before they don't serve food on the boat. There is a great little general store that we found, and we picked up snacks and wine, and they had a court. They had a corkscrew and everything for us, right? They'd yes, they had the there. ice, they had the glasses, the glasses the corkscrew, but bring, yeah, because there was a refrigerator, but you do have to bring your own food and drinks, but it's like a block, two blocks away, maybe. Uh, you just look for the general store. They have everything from candy to pretzel. We just brought pretzels. We just brought pretzels and it didn't matter. We just wanted to see the sunset. And Rachel took the wheel. I did. She, uh, yeah. The hell? They let her actually captain the boat, sail yeah. the boat. I've seen her behind that big, it was like the real big wooden ship's wheel. Was, I, we had a tiller. Mine had a tiller and my husband screaming, you know, to, I was like the winch wench, you know, <laughs> I had to loosen the winches. Like, go over there, Ali, blah, blah, blah. She was like, ah, I'm cool. I'm yeah. Just gonna, <laughs> I, I was the wind very good. In her hair. It was just so beautiful. And I mm -hmm. love I just just I was at the on the bow just looking out. Just it was gorgeous. You were on the bow. You stood on the bow. Yeah. That's my thing though. I love to be out yeah. on the bow. It was always me, Carissa, and Courtney out on the bow. Um, we, I don't know. That was the thing, sitting out there. And then, you know, what I loved about him is uh with the um, with Captain Dan was that if you didn't, you know, want to get splashed and, 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 um, like he would take it easy if you didn't, but we were like, no, go for it. You no, know? No, he was just dying. And so just so you can see, this is my, I keep it on my refrigerator. This is what <laughs> I love this stuff. Um, sail the outer banks magnet. So, and that is there, if you're planning on visiting, it's um, Sail the Outer, uh, I'm sorry, not Sail the, it's SailOuterBanks.com. We will have that for you. Um, I'm sure that Rachel is probably putting it now. Uh, you I can also it. go to TheCompassGirls.com. Afterwards, we're going to have everything up there if you want to learn where to stay, what to do, who to who to contact. I Yeah, I dropped the ball for a minute. And if you go, I put it. Yes, because Captain yeah, and Catherine. Let them know you said hello. Don't forget, keep on engaging. We've got some giveaways. Um, I just wanna, you got a question, Z. Um, yeah. EJ's 11-year-old daughter wants to know, will you ever vacation on Long Island and visit the McDonald's mansion? Oh, actually, that sounds like fun. Uh, that would be a lot of fun. EJ, have your daughter tell me about it. I would love to know more about it. Yeah, me too, because that's close to me. And that's Courtney, close to you. I would up to your house, and then we could go from there. Yeah, and Courtney, um, back to the makeup. She said we have to try the makeup eraser. She's obsessed with it. So I'm gonna uh, check I saw that. that. Yep. So I, I am that. going. I to... it, they had some at either Marshalls or TJ Maxx. Cheaper. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I'm going to do that. So now I'm going to talk about the OBX um, biplanes. When I tell you, it was like, I've never done a biplane before. I've done a four seater plane that I actually flew over Manhattan, Three Mile Island. It was amazing. Um, that's a whole nother story. But, um, it was Zippy and I in the, it's an open uh, cockpit. cockpit plane. So it was Zippy and I, and we had Captain Larry in front of us. We had the headphones on. No, he was in back of us. I mean, in back of us. He was yeah, in back we were, of us. We were right in the front. Right. That's he right. I, you know why? Because I took the camera and went, I did a selfie of him behind right. us so he couldn't see us so anytime he asked us a question we had to like do a thumbs up to show him that we or were okay if we, if we, so, if we could 
scared. <laughs> he was, when I tell you he was the best narrator of like, we oh, flew yeah. over everything, every single thing, all the beaches. Um, and he really narrated Everywhere we were, we saw um, dolphins, schools of dolphins. We saw sea turtles. Um, we saw a shipwreck. Yes, I was uh, shocked. We saw, I didn't know there was a shipwreck. Uh, the 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 one is it one one cheese fishing village. One, one cheesy. Yep. That, yep. And um, that's where the Wicked Tuna was filmed. There, that TV show. They had a. a one of their episodes, one of their episodes, or one of the one of the tuna guys was from there. Oh yeah. Um yeah. what was that? Uh Wicked Tuna. Was that Wicked Tuna was the name of the show? Yeah, because they were there. Yep. Um we didn't yeah. see them, but everybody was yeah. talking about it. Yeah. They were really yeah. proud of it, sort of kind of. <laughs> that was cool. Um, yeah, so Oh, and then, so if, <laughs> tip, if you want to do, um, you know, circle loops, which I did, and Zippy was like, uh, no, I don't want to. But so, so Captain Larry said, give us a thumbs up if you want to do it. She's like this. I'm like this. <laughs> and However, we couldn't do the loops. Like we could not do the loops because you have to let him know beforehand because you actually have to wear a parachute, I guess, in case you fall out of the plane. <laughs> but the you're not gonna. He was such an amazing driver or, or pilot. Yeah. Um, he did at one point do the whole, you know, because we wanted it like a roller coaster. He said, you like roller coasters? We were like, yeah. yeah. So he like made the plane kind of go like this. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, don't eat before you do it. Just oh, don't drink before you do it. Yeah, don't so, drink. You you could eat. It wasn't that bad. It it was beautiful. The other was, thing, make sure you're here is not only in a a tight knot, but tucked up so good in your helmet because it will take you a couple hours to get the knots out if the hair is long. Because I was like, oh, no, I'm good. Don't worry about it. And my ponytail was going. <sighs> yeah. It yeah. was ready to take off. One of the greatest things about this flight, I thought, was he flew us right over where the Marks, where the right Marks brothers, where the right brothers. <laughs> <laughs> where the right brothers flew so we flew right where they flew it was and you could see in the picture that's actually the whole thing. and you went down as if we were going to go down on the runway it was incredible it kind of yeah, absolutely incredible um we got to see that land and strip what he told us he wasn't supposed to do that he wasn't but he did it and i know I know. I have to tell everybody it's amazing. It I was know. the most, of, it was one of the best experiences to be able to fly where they flew. And we got yeah. to see the monument from the air. We yeah. flew over Andy Griffith's house. That's right. Oh, I forgot. You know what? I totally forgot about that. Yep. And he also does um, a helicopter and a warplane. So next time yeah. we go back, we're definitely um, we're going to do the war plane. Um, that's definitely a must. So he's at obxeartouradventures.com. His wife is so oh, nice. Sweetheart. Um, there. Oh, the other thing was is that he took like all our pictures. We did a video, so he had a GoPro up there, right? So you see us screaming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was. I don't think you can hear us. Could you hear us screaming? You know what? I don't remember, but it was so. Oh, because I had the live video on. Remember, I was. Doing oh, that's right. You had live yeah. video. We both had live video, but it's. You know what? It was so shaky. It was. Do it from our live yeah. video was good, and then um, the only thing I wished I did that I didn't, and I think that you should do it is you need to have a little red baron scarf 
when you do that. Okay. Next time. I, I, I'll tell you what, I loved that. That to me was completely exhilarating. And I don't, I had absolutely no fear. You know, I, I'm kidding when I go at, I had no fear. He was such a wonderful pilot. Yeah, there was, you know, oh, open cockpit. I mean, he's um, not going. So, EJ, you don't even need a historical tour because he tell literally he tells you everything. Like he gives you history. I learned about the shipwrecks and and how like all the rum was there. Like he literally gave us. He narrated the entire Outer Banks. I. I, I wish that I recorded him because the information was just so much that I, I can't even retain it all of what he said. Plus, he has such a good eye that he'll say, dolphin pod off this oh, way, yeah. giant yeah. turtle off that yeah. way. They'd be giant turtles. You know, he's a giant turtle. And he would tell us, off to your right, look down. Off yeah. to your right on the horizon, look down on the left. There's a dolphin pond. So we didn't is, miss anything at all. No, no. And if you didn't see it, you all you had to do was tell him and he'd circle around until you saw it. Yeah. That's how nice he was. I mean, yeah. not like there's only two awesome. people in the in you know the biplane only seats two. Didn't it? Did it seat more than two? No, it seats two. Two, right? So it's all, it's yours. You can tell him. You can say, "Oh, please take us by there again." Or and he'll ask, "Do you want to see this? Do you want to do that?" So, and that then after we did that, all stinky and sweaty, <laughs> Zippy went hang gliding at the age of was I sixty three? Was it last year? Or was it this year? It was it was last fall. So I was 64. At the age of 64, I went hang gliding for the first time. Let me tell you, when it was suggested that it was going to that we were going to hang glide, I was like, oh no, not me. I don't have a death wish. I'm not adventurous. My idea of adventurous is opening a fresh bottle of wine that I've never tasted or maybe, a, you know, well, I, no, it's traveling, but not hang gliding. I'm not a daredevil. Um, I don't jump off of things. So I was scared. Then I learned that we were jumping, as you can see, off of a sand dune. And I was less scared because I'm thinking, I'm going to land on a sand dune. That's not quite as bad. But you let me tell you, you first of all, you, you're working with Kitty Hawk Kite, which is probably one of it's the major hang gliding school in the country, I think, isn't it? Isn't that what they said? Or one of the two major ones in the country. These guys know their stuff. Um, it's in Jockey's, uh, Jockey's Ridge State Park. Uh, it's a beautiful state park. You uh, sit down and you watch videos. You learn about all your equipment. You learn your safety equipment. You learn exactly what to do. They run through it so many times that it's in embedded in your mind. <laughs> they don't let you hang glide until you know that, you know, what pushing out is and what pushing in is and what, you know, how to how to turn it and how to land. It's actually much simpler than I thought it would be. Um, and we had Wolf and Alex who were amazing. Oh my God, our so you have to go through the course and get your permit. We got our permits. I did they take them? I can't find my permit. No, we I have it. I have my logbook, but I don't have my permit. Oh, you should have your your permit. I thought I have mine. I thought I, we had. A, I gave gave it to them, but here's the deal: you have to hike up to the top of the. Aren't they adorable? You have to hike up to the top of the dune in order to jump off. There's there ain't no elevator. There ain't no escalator. There ain't nobody to push you. And it's what like the highest dune. It's the high. It's the highest dune in. It took us a long time to get up there sideways. Huh? 
it took us a long time to get up that dune side. It took me a lot longer because I was, I was, at, I would get so many feet. I was huffing and puffing, and I would have to sit, and I'm going, "Go without me, go without me. I'll never make it." <laughs> I get a little over dramatic. It took me a long time. So you did you really have, good. You have breathing issues. If you have, I have a, I have a, a bum knee. If you have a bad knee, hip, back. It is an issue getting up to the top of the dune. I should have said something in advance. I didn't. But I was going to do it. I did it. I did it. And you were so happy once you got up there. And I, was happy. It. I was happier getting to the top of the sand dune than anything. It's like, oh my God, I made it. Kids were sledding down the sand dune. That's how high it was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they were having sledding, a fun. Like on a toboggan. Yep. Crazy. So you take a couple of test runs. Actually, you take a you take two test runs. Is that what it was? I only did test runs. So you're basically a human kite when when you first go off. It's not like you're not jumping off of a cliff. You're running off of the edge of a sand dune. You're maybe 15, what is it, about 15 feet? No, it's more than that. How high is the dune? Well, the, 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 dune, the dune is very, very high, but you're always only about like 15 feet. Yeah, when you, jump, when you go, you actually, you go down. So yeah, you're, really, so you're flying down the dune. Right, and when you're learning, they actually like, they almost look like kite strings on either side, either end of the hang glider. So your instructors are holding on to you. Thank God. They're running down the dune. They're running as fast as they can as you are pushing out, pulling in to go. Let me, you pull in to go faster. You push out to go slower. Now, I have a bad knee. If you have a bad knee, you have to tell them in advance. There are different ways of landing. Yeah. It was wonderful. They had me cross my legs and land on my belly. So I never had to worry about injuring my hip, my back, or my knee. So it really is okay for someone who is, I'm going to be 65 in a couple of weeks, who is my age. There's absolutely no way you're going to crash. You're going to land in soft sand. Can we tell... Really can we tell what they said to me? Yeah, go ahead. Well, I don't remember really. The, the well, you were natural. They wanted you to keep doing it. That's what he said. He, he said, said it was a natural and it was the best run of the day. Right. Rachel glided like a, a bird. Like a and bird. Said, oh. I, you know, I went towards the trees and then I was like down. I was just excited you that I, I really I, good. You went far. Yeah, I went far. It felt really good. But Rachel, I did it. I honestly only did it twice. And it wasn't because I didn't want to keep doing it. It was because of the hike back up the dune that was an yeah, issue. Yeah, that was rough. That was really rough. I mean, I my body couldn't do it. It took me now, a long time. Yeah. Tips. Sand. You're in sand. Make sure you prepare for sand. You're high up on a sand dune. Make sure you're wearing sunblock. Make sure you have sunglasses on. Make sure you have flip-flops on so you can take them off because you're going to be running off a cliff and you don't want them to fall off when you're doing it. Most importantly, keep your lens cap on your camera. I completely ruined a cannon camera i took photos in a sand dune got camera got sand in the works and and it's an older camera and done you think of it as being in a sahara sandstorm it's not like that i mean you don't get sand in your face like that but sand can do damage it can give you burns in your on your face sand burns on, and sand burns you can't sit remember we were sitting yeah. and you're getting whipped by the sand but then yeah. when you stood to wait, because you're tired after coming up that hill. So you you stood. And and the day we went, there were really strong winds, which was why they were running down with us because right. it was right. which was why they were having us start already laying down because the winds they were like 20 miles an hour. So yeah, you had to start laying down. And on us blowing away. When 
when you take flight, you will get a log book. You um, hang gliders log every single flight they take. Like scuba divers. Just like scuba divers. So I do have a log book with my flight in it, which That's is great. So cool. I know, I kept it. It said the conditions were, it says south at 20, southeast at 20 miles per hour, which is pretty fast for wind. Yeah. Um, and zipping it or bad I, I, Remember? A, what was that? Your bag was zipped and there was still all sand in it. Oh, yeah. No, Sam gets everywhere. Sam, yeah, I mean, Sam gets in everywhere. You'll know be washing your crotch out for weeks. <laughs> Just say, don't wear contacts. <sighs> so they have um, dune. We did the dune flights. They also have tandem flights where you can fly with an instructor. I don't know if you can see. Can you see that? Yeah, look at that. Um, yeah, this is from their Kitty Hawk flights. And uh, so, I mean, this is kind of one of those must do things. And most importantly, order the video because it is their, this funniest hack when they, they put it right on the, on, the, on the bar of the hang gliding height and it faces you. So you get, you get your expression oh as you're climbing. Oh my gosh, yeah. It's pretty fun. So, anyway. That was we did have a good but one of the other things that both Rachel and I really love to do. Rachel's going to talk a little bit about, and uh, that's the equine adventures. It's horseback riding. Okay, so I love horses. I love horseback riding. I'm fair at it. Zippy's more of a horseback rider than I am, but I can um, trot. Not anymore. I can't canter. I could trot. So. Um, we went to this horseback riding adventure and they assign you a horse. They ask you, you know, are you a novice, intermediate expert? They find out what you are so they can match you to the horse. And our guide was uh, this girl, Ricky. She was a riot, love her. As a matter of fact, Zippy and I are friends with her still. We're friends on Facebook. We're actually gonna meet up again. She's a riot. So. She's so she is hysterical. She is. She, she is. Down to like we we clicked with her like that. So yeah. then um she says to us, Are you a not on the bug spray? Yeah. How do I hear me talking? What you are so they can match you. You don't have me on somewhere, right? No, that just went that hit on. You're fine. It's okay. fine. So it just, it's, 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 I'm sorry about that. I think that's why like musicians and everybody have those earpieces in because otherwise you hear all that stuff. Yeah. And then you can't, if you're listening to something, you can't talk at the same time. It just throws you off. Anyway, she tells us, put on the bug spray. So, you know, you like, if you were outside, you put on, she's like, no, no, no. Spray everywhere and do it three times. And we were like, okay. And then you could, Wear a helmet if you want. If the if the kids come under 16, they have to wear helmets. So we spray up our bug spray. I have on jeans. Um, on jeans. Zippy has on jeans. We get on our horses, and you got to travel through, like, woods to get, because we're going to the beach, right? Yeah, it's like the trail ride. To get ride these horses on the beach. So we got to go through the woods. All of a sudden, you're in the woods, and you're on this little path, and mosquitoes come. I don't know if feed in North Carolina mosquitoes, but those suckers could take out like anything. They're they're huge. I've never seen in my whole life. I've never seen mosquitoes that large. I mean, it's almost like dragonflies. You know, like dragonflies. It's like mosquitoes on steroids. And there was so many mosquitoes. It was like swarms that I was like, I am going to be so bit that it's going to be really bad. Well, we got through, we had, and it's because there's like water puddles, muck that you got to go through. And, and the only thing she tells you is make sure your horse doesn't try to go off. And they spray the horses too, because they don't want the horses to get bit. But yeah. um, make sure your horse doesn't go off because the horse will try to, you know, kind of brush you off or, or brush up against the, the trees or, or bushes or whatever. So you just keep your horse on the trail. You're following everybody. It's all good. So we get through 
And then you come out to like this dune and you just see a beautiful blue sky. And then you come up a little bit more and you just see the waves rolling in. You can hear it from the trail too. As you, oh. as you, you can hear the crashing of the ocean. And you're like, oh my God, you're almost you're on, there. You're on this horse. You come out and now they separate. And they're like, if you want to walk, Stay here if you want to trot or canter, come with us. So this way you could decide whatever you're comfortable with. Well, I was ready. Hi, Carla. And hi, Eileen. Um, I was ready to actually, you know, me, I want to gallop on the sands. <laughs> so, <laughs> and there was a mom. She was my age, but she had a little a, a littler kid or not a little kid a teenager i don't know my kids are older so i always say little kid but she had a teenager and the mom was there with me and she was like she was an expert at writing and blah 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 so then we um we start going and i got my horse to go a little bit and then there i was trotting now trotting you think oh trotting you know it's like doo -doo 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 -doo. let me tell you something it was so scary and exciting and invigorating and I was holding on for dear life <laughs> and literally I was like this please please don't make me fall off right so then finally I was like whoa so I I you know slowed the horse down I was like all right we're gonna we're gonna walk it a little bit until I get used to this so then with the other horses like they were those people were excellent riders they're taking off and your horse you got to know this your horse is going to want to go with the pack of horses so you got to be ready to pull back well the poor poor lady that was walking next to me i decided that i was going to go ahead and try the canter again and i went like that and we took off well the lady next to me her horse saw my horse and her horse took off. She wasn't expecting it. She fell off the horse. So we did have to stop. She was fine. And uh, I felt really bad because I talked her into not wearing the, <laughs> the helmet. Because oh. I thought for a picture. You should always wear a helmet if you're not an experienced rider. She, no, no. She said she was up high on a horse. So riding on the beach is riding in the sand. A horse in the sand is very different than a horse on packed like mud, uh, packed soil on a trail. But it wasn't that. Um, it wasn't oh, as yeah. hard as I thought it was going to be. I remember I was nervous that the horse was going to slip in the sand and fall. I was like, I was, I ride, and I was telling yeah. Tippy, I'm so nervous about the sand because it's squishy. And you ever walk in sand, and you're like, you know, you it's hard to run in sand. Well, my horse, whose name was Belle, my little lovely. I don't remember the name of my horse. Well, it was Belle, and that's you know. Oh, that's mine. Beauty and the Beast, Belle and Courtney and Izzy. How could I forget that? It was just so appropriate because us princesses stick together. <laughs> so yeah. like, hey, oh, I feel bad. I thought for pictures I would help the lady out. I talked her into not wearing the helmet. She did say to my defense that she was, you know, an expert writer. And um I just think she got caught. You know, unexpected. So on the sand. Very she got back up. She was totally, totally fine. She was good. You know, you fall off a horse, get back on it or whatever. I trotted. I did not fall off my horse. Um, zip. Oh wait, I didn't look. Zippy and I. Let me show you. Oh my god. Are you <laughs> Like, You're so how cute good. are we? And we got a cuter one of us, like, pretending to kiss. Well, there was a honeymooner. There were honeymooners, and they were taking all these photos, kissing on their horses. So, of course, we had to make fun of them. No. <laughs> we didn't really make fun of them. We said, oh, we want a picture of doing that. And the photographer's like, what? <laughs> what? But yeah. 
So yeah. this is a definite do. Our tips are um, definitely, they have bug spray there, but definitely bring bug spray and spray yourselves good. Wear pants. I did this my new, remember the horse on the way back, the horse went into the bush to get the mosquitoes off. Oh, by the way, not one bite, not one bite. And um, when you hit the beach, they magically disappear. Like yeah. they're just yeah. gone, not one mosquito. So um, the mosquito just have a heads up that they're going to be there. But if you spray well, they will not bother you at all. And um, wear pants. Keep your horse on the track. Wear a helmet if you're a newbie. Wear sneakers. You can't ride a horse in flip-flops. You can't ride a horse barefoot. You have to get in the stirrups. You have to make sure that you're riding high in the stirrups because and ride high in the saddle. And you have to make sure that your stirrup your stirrups should always hit about there so that you can you actually lift when you ride, you don't sit. When you ride, you're actually in a position that's slightly up with your knees into the horse so that your horse, when your horse goes up, you're not going down. You go up with the horse, you go down with the horse. And you do that by not sitting on the horse. You do it so that you're actually about that much higher than the saddle. You ride, they call it riding high in the saddle. You ride a little higher than the saddle. You sit when you're when you're trail riding, but if you're gonna canter or trot, you have to make sure that you're fairly high in the sa saddle. So make sure that you have boots, cowboy boots, boots, or sneakers or hard shoes. See what I love traveling with her? She's like an encyclopedia. Oh me? Yeah, you know. I grew up with horses. race horses. I grew up, my father wanted me to be a jockey because I was short. Oh, I haven't ridden for years, though. Um, so that is uh, equine. So we're going to tell about one more thing, and then, because um, we're way over, but I, I, we got to tell you about our, you know, 10 o'clock in the morning brewery trip. <laughs> because who doesn't drink uh, homemade rum at 10 a.m. It's five o'clock somewhere. It is five o'clock somewhere, and at Kill Devil Rum, it seems to be five o'clock all day and all night. That's right. So, I tell you, Mantio has some amazing things. We're going to tell you about the food there and some of the other things we did um, on another um, episode. But um, was it 10 o'clock in the morning? 11.30, yeah, I guess it was in the morning. I know it was before noon. So hint number one, eat before you go, <laughs> especially if you're going in the morning because that stuff is not this stuff. That's really fine handcrafted rum. Oh, my and God, I forgot my nuts. I have them. I was going to show. And another gem comes out of Rachel's <laughs> mouth. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So a little backstory. They were a cut two bartending friends. And um th that was Matt and Scott. I actually have it written down because I, I couldn't remember all of their names. And uh two brewers, Adam and Kelly, and they were all friends. And they decided that they needed to get together and open a brewery, um, a rum brewery to honor the tradition of the Outer Banks, because Kill Devil, which you have Kill Devil Hills, which is a, a town in um, in the ba Outer Banks, uh, actually means it was actually wasn't the pirate word for rum or something like that. Oh, you're going to tell that story. Out. You'll tell the story afterwards. But there's a huge rum and pirate history in um, in the Outer Banks, and so they. Well, and they love rum and they just wanted to share their love of the tradition and of rum and good food and they opened this incredible brewery called um what well, is it just outer banks distilling yes outer Banks distilling, right okay i thought so yeah and it's outerbanksdistilling.com and they make a kill devil kill devil rum that's hard to say it's they make and i'm not a rum drinker i don't like rum drinks i don't like rum with anything sweet I like they rum. a sipping rum that's like drinking cognac or a, or a, or a, or a, um you know some really good hearty sipping 
aperitif kind of drink. Yeah. Their rum, you could just sit and sip. You don't need, you don't, it doesn't need rum, it doesn't need punch. It's just good, delicious tasting rum. They've got uh, a variety of, do you have the photos on there of the variety? Oh, yes. Yeah, they have, they make all different um, types of rum. And I, and they also, I know she said something about the nuts. <laughs> they, so they get nuts and they soak them in the rum, it, right? They're, yeah, so they do that, um, that there's a special rum that they that only for? bring out once a year. And yeah. uh, Eileen, when you come over, you, I'll give you some nuts. I'll share my nuts. But um, uh, they only do it once a year, but like with when you distill rum you got to let it sit and everything so there's only so much and they sell out every year and then right. they take the, it's really good the, the nuts i think it's almonds um they take the almonds uh to soak it's it's you know it's what's left, in the, what's left in the drum right they yeah. take what's left at the bottom of the barrel so you know right. you know rum is in barrels and they roast so, them yeah, like a cre like almost like a creadera in uh, when you make oh sherry. You know, you know what? When we come back and talk about Outer Banks, I'm gonna have my bag of nuts. But I'm gonna tell you, eat the nut, and it's like it's oh, yeah. like you eat five nuts, and it's like doing a shot. Wow! I That's gave mine to them anyway. I get this warm sensation when I bite my nut. <laughs> So, and, and again, you know, we'll talk more, more about food and drink when we talk about those kind of things, when um, we do a second episode on, there's just so much to do there. And that's, that's one of the Can things. Can I tell my story? Yeah, tell your story. I love that so story. We're going to have to have to do with what we were just talking about. And I'll just drink some more. Okay. And then you oh, drink. Please. So uh, one of the things about the Outer Banks is that more than 1,000 shipwrecks have happened there. And um, it's actually got the nickname of the Graveyard of Atlantic. This kind of excites me because I'm also a scuba diver, and I think that must be amazing to dive there, although I would never because I would be afraid that a shark would pop out like on um, Nemo. So, <laughs> so I, I wouldn't do it. But um, some of the wreckage contained barrels of rum, and the town of Kill Devil Hills was believed to be named for either the barrels of rum um, or the brand name Kill Devil um, because what they said was this rum was strong enough to kill the devil. That's how strong it was. So that's wow. where Kill Devil um, came in. And then um, there's also a wise tale that some of the ships were lured to the shore to actually be shipped wrecked for their rum. And that was um, for the, uh, they would hang a, um, a lantern on the, uh, the nag, which is a horse, the nag's neck. So that's where you have nag's neck, kill devil yeah. hill. And um, yeah, so that was, the wise tale that the horses would walk along the dunes and and cause these ships to come in um then the story continues i'm sorry I, i'm reading here because i don't remember this part fully but the story continues with the plundered barrels of rum being hid behind the hill which is now the site of the wright brothers memorial and um in 1873, that area life saving station adopted the name of um, Kill Devil's Hills. And then the town took the name in 1953. So I just thought that was such a, a great story because here you have this rum distillery, and basically, all, you know, so much of the Outer Banks was created because of 
the shipwrecks and the rum. So you have, you know, I don't know. I thought it was cool. <laughs> what? You know what? It's the one I, someone said to me, stop saying that. But, um, I don't know. It's fun. <laughs> It's Rachel, guys. That's one of the reasons you're here. <laughs> and she always keeps me entertained. So um, we went way, way over, but thank you all so much for sticking around. I hope that you learned a lot. And um, hopefully you'll get down to Outer Banks. We're, we're going back. We're definitely going back. We, yeah. We're going to talk. Um, more about it. We'll let you know when, but we got to talk about how we went on a uh, crab and boat, the Wrights Brothers Museum. We went up to two lighthouses. We went yeah, to the famous Hatter's Lighthouse, the beautiful Hatter's Lighthouse in Bodie yeah, Island. And Bodie. Yep. Um, yep. We did Karoo Village. Which, which is a great resort, yoga spa resort that's amazing with great food. The pier. Healthy food. And, yep, the pier. And the food. Wait till we tell you. And we found like one little hideaway spot that you have to go to. Um, we yes, we did. Ice cream for ice cream. Oh, I, I found my little. I don't want to card. say the name of it because. No, I don't know the name of it, but I have a punch card right here. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. I'm going back um, more. We're, we're going to talk <laughs> more about the Outer Banks. Next week, we're talking about accessories, all kinds of accessories, not just jewelry, but all kinds of accessories. Oh, and we're also good. talking about New Bedford, Massachusetts, which um, there's definitely an adventure there. And um, we got a lot to share about that. So, and, and by the way, Valentine's Day is coming up. So we're going to have like a special Valentine's Day, of course. That's sure all. Wrong. Um, show you definitely next week. And um, if you can get out there and share our page to your friends because the page is new, so everybody isn't going to see us like they normally do right. from our pages. So we would really appreciate any sharing you did and, of course, follows. Um, Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at, at The Compass Girls. On Instagram at the Compass Girls, Facebook the Compass Girls. <laughs> I can't see your theme here, uh, the blog thecompassgirls.com. <laughs> we're we're the Compass Girls. Yeah, yeah Rachel and Z. Yeah. And by the way, Z, Rachel is the only person in the world who calls me Z. So we're just keeping it Rachel and Z. <laughs> She's Z. She's too lazy to say Zippy. Yeah, I am too lazy. Um, hey, the other thing, too, if you have questions or comments, if there is something you think would be a fun topic, how about this? Do you have something to talk about? Why don't you join us? You can come on with us. How about that? That would be fun because we're a freaking party. Can I say that? Yeah, you can say that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just don't want them to say, well, there are kids in the room. And no, no, I get it. I'm, I'm trying. Yeah, yeah. I'm usually pretty good, too. Um, yeah. <laughs> I am. Okay, so we I'm, went an hour and a half, 30 minutes over, and you guys stuck it out with us. Thank you so much. And, um, you. you know, we'll be here next Wednesday, 8 p.m. Right. And we will we'll announce the winners after. Yeah. The, or do you want to announce the winners now? Uh, oh. yeah, we'll do it after because we want to go see. I can't see who commented. Yeah. Because Why don't you? Have this thing on my screen that says travel chat. I yeah. team no. chat. It, because it, I opened it and don't know how to close it because I'm a. Well, this so. was the first time. Like each week, you're going to notice we're adding stuff because, like, our names are underneath. I think you guys could see those. And I did pictures today. So it's a work in progress. So, really, if you have comments, sure. tips, anything, um, whatever. 
I don't, I'm reading a comment and I don't understand it. So that's okay. All right. So, Hey, you may not be watching, but you got your phone on Facebook in the car and you're listening. So if you are, thanks for the ride. <laughs> I love that. Good night. Good night. Ciao.